Mantle, I'm Samantha B, and I am so sorry because tonight we have to talk about Trump. Boo! Boo! You know, a surprising downside of not having a studio audience is having to do your own booze. Despite his administration's tireless effort making everyone's lives absolute shit, it seemed like Trump was never really interested in doing much actual work himself. But earlier this week, we learned that there were some times when Trump was actually working much harder than we realized. The New York Times has new reporting about former President Trump's attempt to seize, physically seize voting machines after the 2020 election. Trump was personally involved in pushing some of the proposals to use federal agencies to do the dirty deed. Trump's advisors drafted not one, but two versions of an executive order. One directing the Department of Defense and the other telling the Department of Homeland Security to seize them. Rage against the machines. They tried that package with Florence and the machine, but it just didn't work as well. While we knew that Trump advisors had floated the idea of seizing voting machines, until now, we didn't know how much Trump actually considered and even pushed for those plans. And it is shocking to hear just how far he was willing to go. I mean, Rudy Giuliani had to convince him that mobilizing the military was crossing the line. Rudy Giuliani thought that was too much. The same Rudy Giuliani who just followed up trying to install Trump as king by going on The Masked Singer and losing in the first episode they taped that season. Even weirder, Rudy's Masked Singer costume was somehow also Rudy Giuliani. Chilling. The stakes for holding Trump accountable have never been higher. His endorsement still goes a long way with GOP voters, which will certainly impact the midterms, and it looks alarmingly, like he'll run again in 2024. He started this year with more than double the cash on hand of the RNC, and he even seems to be whipping his base into a frenzy for another January 6th. If these radical, vicious, racist prosecutors do anything wrong or illegal, I hope we are going to have in this country the biggest protest we have ever had in Washington, D.C., in New York, in Atlanta and elsewhere because our country and our elections are corrupt. The only question this time is if the GOP will do anything to stop him. The answer is, oh my God, no. I mean, sure, a few Republicans are suggesting it's time for the party to find a new leader, but we saw this same pattern in 2016 when Republicans like Lindsey Graham criticized Trump until they were eventually beaten into fawning submission. Meanwhile, Susan Collins is still, well, Susan collins -ing. Can you imagine any circumstances where you could support his election in 2024? Well, we're a long ways from 2024. Well, why can't you rule out supporting him in 2024? Well, certainly it's not likely, given the uh, many other qualified candidates that we have that have expressed interest in running. So it's very Senator unlikely. Con? Throw a pair of tits, Susan Collins. Pick a goddamn side. You probably go, I don't know. What do you want when someone asks you what you want to eat? I know what I want, Suze. I want Golden Corral, and I want to rip someone's throat out when I get it. No steak? Mistake. The frustrating but ultimately unsurprising fact is that most Republicans will continue to fall in line behind Trump because he's the party's top fundraiser and the polling frontrunner. Second place is a tie between Ron DeSantis and some old Ronald Reagan toenails they think they can use to Jurassic Park him back to life, which honestly, I wouldn't mind seeing. If nothing else, it'll be cool when he goes nuts and starts eating people. And conveniently for Republicans, repeating Trump's delusions of voter fraud goes hand in hand with their mission to f with elections. Say that you're a voter in Arkansas. The county clerk you elected could be stripped of their authority by the Republican-led State Board of Election Commissioners. Say you're a voter in Georgia where you elect the Secretary of State. The Republican legislature has purged him as a voting member of the State Election Board. Now big lie believers are setting their sights on overseeing elections. 18 are gunning for the top election post, Secretary of State. 18 more are just gunning to be gunning. They don't need a reason, it's always gun season. Another horrifying scenario that could give Trump an advantage in 2024 is that some states have even proposed bills that would allow partisan actors like state lawmakers or judges to outright reject election results. That's un-American. 
When we want judges to overturn the will of the people, we give them lifetime appointments. Of course, the big lie isn't the only thing repeatedly kicking American democracy in the balls. We've also seen an unprecedented deluge of racist attacks on voting rights. Republicans in Georgia continue to work to suppress the vote. Early last year, they put a new law on the books that will, among other things, give voters less time to request absentee ballots, enforce strict new ID requirements for absentee ballots, drastically slash the number of ballot drop boxes, and make offering food or water to voters waiting in line a misdemeanor charge. Well, this week, Governor Ron DeSantis effectively asked the state legislature for his very own election police force. That is terrifying, even for Florida, where you can't go without your slowest family member being eaten by an alligator. Did that happen to me? No, it happened to my slowest family member. Are you even listening? In the last year alone, legislators enacted at least 34 laws with restrictive voting provisions in 19 states, with over 440 possible bills in 49 states, or in layman's terms, a ton. And then there's that democracy ruining chestnut, gerrymandering. While Democrats do their own fair share of creative redistricting, Republicans have made gerrymandering a racist science. This cycle, Republicans could redraw the lines of 187 congressional districts. At this point, Tennessee's district map is just a straight up Confederate flag. All of this sets the stage for kneecapping Democrats in the midterms this year and Trump's eventual return in 2024. Look, no one wants to ignore Donald Trump more than me. I felt so dirty after he won in 2016. I was molting once a week just to get clean. In fact, most of my old skins are still available for purchase on TBS's merch page. They don't just say nasty woman, they smell it. Shout out to the true freaks who got theirs before it wasn't cool. Seriously, the last thing I want to do is talk about Donald Trump. Even thinking about him makes me want to vomit. And not the normal vomit, that acid vomit Jeff Goldblum had in the fly. It's basically a cliche at this point for late night hosts to yell at Trump, which is why it's been so nice to take a break from covering every time the freak show looked straight into a solar eclipse. But what he's doing right now is a real and dangerous threat. We have to talk about him because we can't survive another four years of a Trump presidency. And we definitely can't survive another four years of Trump jokes. We'll be right back. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to hear more from Full Frontal, like and subscribe. If you'd like to hear some opinions from a man in a lifted truck, leave YouTube on autoplay.